When was the last time we tried a Quest 2 facial interface that didn't have a fan on top of it? Waytech, yeah, I said that right. Waytech has a facial interface they sent us for the Quest 2 that have to uh, make some promises. Let's find out. 20 bucks, but there's a $2 off coupon right now on Amazon. Two different types of pads for it. You got one that's got the little ventilation holes in it. It feels like they're both made out of PU leather though. Basically one's got holes, one doesn't. It's got the rubber nose guard. Oh, it's one of the ones that hooks on this way. It kind of just overlaps over itself. These never stay on. Whatever this is, I have never seen this come with any facial interface. I have no idea what that is. Here's the actual facial interface itself. It's got some vents in the top. Looks like it's made off of a pretty old design. Like these are what the original, oh my gosh. Now I see what they are. So where almost e every other, not almost every other facial interface I've ever gotten comes with the Velcro attached here, they give you the option to customize your Velcro yourself by sending you the Velcro and deciding where to put it. I guess that's why it's $18 instead of usually the usual 20. The crappiest kind of lens cover, a lot of them include that, that's not unusual. Analog thumbstick covers in black and in mint. Is that the name of that color? I think that might be mint. Okay. I thought arts and crafts time was over. I don't even know like what I'm aiming for. There's not like, is that is that a line that's guiding me here? Let's, let's hope so. It's so sticky. I feel like a factory that made this would have done a much better job than I'm doing trying to get this on there myself. There are facial interfaces for this price that don't put you through this. Just, just letting you know. How many of you can guess uh, how the review is going on this right now? I bet you have a pretty good idea. <laughs> I asked myself, did I put these in wrong? But by the curve, there's no way this would have gone over here. But the reason I ask that is because at the very beginning here, this thing fits inside of the grooves, but by the end, it's bigger. It doesn't fit the grooves anymore, so you have to kind of hang it out the sides. Oh. Was this a mistake? I've never seen this happen. Did they forget to like finish this before they sent this? The problem is you get it right, and then you try and pull your fingers off, and your fingers are so sticky from sticking to it that you screw it up after. Luckily, once you get on there, you can kind of like, the glue is, I don't even know if it's glue, I don't know what you call it. It's very tacky. But because of that, you can kind of still push it around a little bit and move it. So you can kind of undo the wrinkles that you've made when you inevitably got your hands stuck to it. It's rare that I get an accessory that I have to spend this much time assembling it before I can even test it. This is a treat. Just a treat. I should be pretty good at this part right here because so many facial interfaces that come with this style always come off that you're putting them back on all the time. I've glued facial interfaces on before that have this design just so they'll never come off again. Okay, we are getting there. That's the nose guard. Oh boy. A lot of facial interfaces you buy come just like this and you can just jump right into using them. But this one gives you the pleasure of getting the test yours for a long time. Goodbye fan. You will be missed. First impressions on install, actually, once you get it all built, aren't terrible because the snap-ins do snap in really hard. They've used a very dense and hard plastic material. There's no give to it, which is interesting because most facial interfaces at least have a little give. This is like very rigid and it's smooth and shiny too. So it also looks different than a lot of facial interfaces. It falls prey to the immediate issue though that a lot of the older ones had. So because they weren't flexible, this part right here doesn't want to mold to my face with the pressure, it just hangs out. So I've got whole finger gaps here where I can stick my fingers in on the side. Some people might say that's ventilation, but the problem that that poses, once the thing goes in, you don't think it's gonna come back out, that's for sure. The problem that that poses, that these are not actually molding to my face here on the sides, is that means all the pressure this is giving me is right here and right here. It doesn't mold to my face on the side, so it doesn't balance out that pressure. And of course, light can easily get in with the sides like that. I will go game a bit. I've tested a million facial interfaces like this, but I will go game a bit because I wanna see if this thing pops out at all because it, it does stay in really nice. I'll give it that. That's the one thing it's got going for it. And I'll come back to you with some final thoughts on it. And if it's worth $18, 
plus the cost of whatever your personal time is and having to assemble it. So I'll be right back. <sighs> so a little ways into playing, I decided to double check and I swapped out to the other pad just to see if it got any better. The comfort actually, the light bleed was one thing. You'd see light in the sides, whatever. The problem, the biggest problem, the glaring problem is the comfort. All the pressures on your cheekbones, and up on your forehead. Even with my Bobo VR M2 Plus, which puts most of the weight on your forehead, I was still having problems here because I kept trying to push it in. Every time you tried to push it, it didn't want to get any closer because it was already pushing on here and here. So 18 bucks, you have to assemble it yourself. I think all of that negates the fact that I do like that it really is in there solidly. That's like the one thing that's just, when it's in, it's in, and you know it's in. I don't think that's worth the prices of everything else you're having to go through for it. And really, it's just an old design. This was like the first facial interface replacements we had, and innovation has changed things. Things are different now. You've got ones that are fully flexible, they're better molded to our faces now because people realize most people don't have a face that can have these huge finger holes here that these had. It's not for me. I will not leave a link in the description because I do not recommend it. But is it for you? Did you somehow find this video because you got one and you thought it was pretty good? I mean, if you're coming from the stock one to this, it also might not be that bad, but I've tried so many facial interfaces as they've changed over time. It just doesn't seem worth that. There's better ones. I'll leave some recommended ones in the description, actually, some better ones. But thank you for coming out and being here with me today. And I will see you in the middle of reality.